Hey everyone, this is Sam and welcome to Recitation 0E on Google Colab. Colab is offered by Google Research and it's a Jupyter Notebook style Python execution environment that can be directly accessed from your browser. For the purposes of this course, you'll mainly be using Google Colab for its computing resources that it offers. Um, for free, you get access to the Tesla T4 GPU and at a cost, you have access to higher end GPUs like the A100, or V100. This recitation also assumes that you're already familiar with these Jupyter Notebooks, but if not, you should definitely do that as you'll be using these notebooks throughout the entire course. All right, let's get right into it. Um, so you can access Google Colab by following this link, which will pull up all your existing notebooks, um, allow you to create new ones, and so on. You can also access Colab, or you can start a new notebook by directly going to your Google Drive, hitting new, more and um, hitting Google Colab here. You can also upload uh, Jupyter Notebooks up here and directly opening them in Google Colab. Now, uh, Colab is hosted on a Linux environment, environment which means you can access the terminal um, by using this exclamation mark. Here's a few useful bash commands that you'll probably end up using throughout this course. NVIDIA SMI gives you information about your current GPU. So it says here, I'm using a Tesla T4. Um, the temperature, here's the temperature, the GPU RAM that is currently being occupied. You also be using these uh, bash commands to download or install any necessary um, packages. And you also have access to some of the more standard commands that I'm sure everyone is familiar with already. Now, um, in addition to bash commands, there's also what's called magic commands, and these are specific to Google Colab. They give you access to some tools, um, such as timing your code, uh, pulling up an interactive debugger, and so on. These can come in useful, but you can um, get through this course perfectly fine without ever having to use these. Now, uh, runtime refers to the environment that your code uh, runs in. So this includes things like CPU, GPU, storage, memory, so on. As I've mentioned, you can pull up um, information about your GPU by writing this command here. Uh, alternatively, you can use torch. So if it says CUDA, that means that you do have access to a GPU, otherwise it'll say CPU. And to change uh, your runtime, you can come up here, hit runtime, and hit change runtime type. Here, you'll be able to select, you know, if you want to use CPU, GPU, or TPU. Um, TPU, we won't be using as it is a completely different architecture. But uh, with these GPUs, T4, you get for free. And if you subscribe to Colab Pro or Colab Pro Plus, you get access to these A100 and V100 GPUs. In addition to your choice of GPU, you can also turn on this high RAM option, which, as the name implies, gives you more system RAM. Um, what it doesn't explicitly mention is that it also gives you a better CPU with more CPU threads. With more CPU threads, you can increase the number of workers for your data loader. Um, I won't go into too much depth here, but please refer to the recitation on data loaders for more information on that. So once you've selected your GPU, you can come up here, and this is where you'll be able to monitor your current environment. So it says here how many computing units you have. This is if you've subscribe to Colab Pro and the rate at which you're using these computing resources. This rate changes based on what GPU you're using, whether or not you're in high RAM, uh, and so on. And finally, you get information about your system RAM, GPU RAM, and your storage information here. So this is all very useful to track as um, you end up training your models. Something noteworthy is that um, if you do come in here and switch your GPU, that is equivalent to deleting your current runtime and starting a new one. If you delete your current runtime, you'll end up losing all the files that is currently in your runtime. So that is really important. Um, if you idle for too long, uh, Google will also end up kicking you out of your current runtime to make space for others. Um, if you subscribe to Colab Pro, you'll end up getting more idle time, but also beware of that. Um, this is for your reference, so here's the training speeds for the different GPUs on a ResNet 50, which is a really popular convolutional neural network. So a V100 offers 3.6 to 
time speed up compared to the T4, and the A100 offers a 10 times speed up. Now, as I've mentioned um, earlier, you lose all the files in your current runtime if your runtime ends, or if you're idle for too long, and so on. So, something that is going to come in really handy is to mount your Google Drive to the current runtime. So, if you go ahead and run this cell here, it'll ask for permission, hit allow, there. Um, what this essentially does is it gives uh, this, this notebook access to your Google Drive so that you're able to save and load models. Uh, once that's done, if I hit refresh here, so here you can see this new folder popped up and this is everything in my Google Drive. So an example use case of this is if you're training your models, and let's say for 100 epochs, um, you might want to end up save. You might want to save model checkpoints so that you don't lose your progress. So a checkpoint could in include things like model weights, um, you know, the current loss, which epoch you're on, and so on. And so this is going to come in really handy. I'm going to initialize a really standard multi-layer perceptron here, and then I'm going to create a folder in my Google Drive and save my model weights to that um, to that directory. So here, if I hit refresh again, there it is, uh, checkpoints, and then that's the model checkpoint that I had just saved. Cool. Um, working with data sets, the main way you'll be obtaining data sets is by um, running this uh, command that looks something like this. This fetches the data set directly from Kaggle into your current session so that you're able to directly work off it. Um, now you'll be working with some fairly large data sets, so sometimes this could take um, 10, 15, even 20 minutes to run. Um, if, and as I've mentioned, if you restart your runtime, you lose everything, which means every time you start a new runtime, you lose your data set. Um, so you might think it's a good idea to store your data set in your Google Drive and then have the session directly work on that data set in your Google Drive. You do not want to be doing that because the IO speed between uh, Google Drive and your current session is really long, which is going to significantly increase your training time. So do not save your data set in your Google Drive and directly work off it. What you can do is, well, you can rerun this cell every single time you start a new runtime. Um, but uh, even more optimally, you can connect Colab to GCP and AWS such that your runtime is hosted somewhere else and so that even if you do end up closing your tab, you still retain all the files um, that you had. I also seen some people save their data set in Google Drive, but every time they start a new runtime, they move that data set to the current session. That could work, um, but the IO speed uh, fluctuates a bit, so it might not necessarily be faster than just rerunning this cell every time you have a new runtime. So something else that is really handy is as you're working through these notebooks, you're going to start filling up your system RAM and GPU RAMs from um, initializing variables, right? So um, you probably very frequently end up running out of GPU RAM. And so one way to clear that is by coming to this runtime tab and hitting restart session. This essentially clears up, uh, clears up all your stored variables and starts from scratch. But what's great about this is that you do not lose your um, the files in your current runtime. Conversely, if you were to hit disconnect and delete runtime, that will um, clear up all your files in addition to um, all your variables. And as I mentioned, if you end up switching your GPU or changing to high RAM, that is equivalent to deleting your current runtime and starting a new one. So you will end up losing your files that way as well. Um, something to be aware of. Now, lastly, um, if you're looking into getting Colab Pro, you can find more information by hitting this monitor tab and hitting learn more. And here you can see all the different tiers. You'll probably end up going for either Colab Pro or Colab Pro Plus. With Colab Pro, you get 100 computer units. With Colab Pro Plus, you get 500. Um, with Colab Pro Plus, I believe you also get access to A100, which you don't get for Colab Pro. And A100 is the highest end GPU that Colab offers. Um, they also claim to have background execution. I've never gotten this to work. Um, I don't know anyone who has. So if you get it to work, let me know. Um, that'll, oh, um, if you 
end up purchase or if you want to co- purchase Collab Pro with your Andrew account, do make sure to contact CWIT as I believe they have to turn on some functionality for your account. Um, and that'll be all for this recitation. This notebook will be available to everyone, so feel free to refer back to it. And good luck to everyone for the coming semester.